Hello Westford, the school committee chose new officers, the town beaches opened for the summer, and mental health issues among teens were in the spotlight this week. I'm Ira Kelts, and it's time for Westford Cat News. The school committee on June 18th elected new officers for the next year. Avery Adam will serve as chairperson, Chris Sanders will be vice chairperson, and Megan Eckroth, secretary. At the last <laughs> regularly scheduled meeting of the school year, the school committee shall elect its officers. The superintendent shall moderate the election of the chairperson. The chairperson will then moderate the election of the others. So, hearing that, uh, the last meeting, there was uh, one nominee for the chairperson, and that was Avery, so that we can have an official vote taken. Um, I'd like to ask all of those who are in favor of having Avery serve as the chair, uh, please raise your hand or say aye. And those opposed? Abstain? Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'll send that back over to you. Okay, same thing. We had one. We had a single nomination of Chris Sanders for vice chair. Mm -hmm. He I is know. home not well. Oh, um, he's not going to actually so I make a statement. His election <laughs> out the next well, time. I actually texted him and I asked him if it was okay to elect him chair, and he wrote back, vice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, is, he is still on board. But Why don't I, we do uh, the same as we did last time? We'll just do it next year. <laughs> <laughs> he's kidding. It's not an um, official motion. So Chris accepted the nomination. It, all in favor of electing Chris vice chair. Oh, unanimous. And last, secretary, we have a nomination of Megan to continue as secretary. You I accept. accept. Oh, yay. <laughs> okay, all in favor of Megan. Okay, yes, okay, <laughs> unanimous. Watch the entire school committee meeting at westfordcat.org. A program designed to inform healthcare professionals, first responders, teachers, and parents on how to help teens experiencing mental illness was held on June 14th. Among the speakers was mental health advocate Sue Hanley, who is the school nurse at Stony Brook School. Hanley has been raising awareness about mental illness and suicide for years. She's the mother of a daughter who attempted suicide three times. Hanley spoke with Westford Cat News Director Joyce Polino Crane in the studio on June 14th and then made a presentation that night at Saving Our Teens, Crisis Mental Health and the Next Generation. Here's Hanley. It's hard as a parent to recognize when your child is struggling. Um, I've always been very open about my daughter's struggle with depression and yes, suicidality. Right. And uh, it was hard at first when I realized what was going on. And I have a history of family, you know, mental illness in my family and I'm a nurse. It was still a struggle to see it in my child. I had no idea that Caroline was struggling with depression until her freshman year in high school. In hindsight, there were signs prior to that, but I didn't really know the signs. I'm a nurse. I have a sister with bipolar disorder, but I didn't know. When she was in fifth grade, she went through a terrible period of time with fears and in fact was in counseling briefly. She was clingy and cried with separation, she was also self-conscious and a perfectionist. I didn't know those were some of the red flags. On the outside, her middle school years were uneventful. I say on the outside because in reality, we do not know what is going on in the inside of anyone. It was her freshman year of high school when she said in a moment of anger, maybe this family would be better off without me, that I really became aware that there was more going on. I'm not going to go through everything that happened along the way, but what I need to stress is that everyone has a story to tell. And we absolutely need to allow those stories to be heard. The event was sponsored by the Westford Health Department and the Merrimack Valley Medical Reserve Corps. The town beaches are officially open as of June 17th. Westford has two public beaches with free admission for residents who can show proof of residency. 
Edwards Beach is located at the end of Williams Avenue and also offers the Rona McGilligan Memorial Playground. Forge Beach is located down an access road just off of Pleasant Street at the Abbott Mill. Both beaches have snack bars and offer swimming instruction, but do not staff lifeguards. Art at the beach is offered Monday through Friday from 11.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Beach hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Non-residents must pay $5 per person per day or purchase a season pass for $75. Ages three and under and 65 and older are free. Make the most of your summer, folks, because the season's short. The beaches close on August 25th. With the recent opening of Phase 2 of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail, the paved bike path now stretches 11.6 miles through Acton. Two Westford representatives for the Friends of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail, Emily Teller and Chris Barrett, recently visited the set of Cranes Main Street to chat about the recreational resource. But I feel very grateful and proud that people from Lowell can come from an urban environment and come through by Hart Pond and the wooded area in Chelmsford and have mm -hmm. that resource and serenity that being out in nature, in so nature, to speak, right. gives them. It's very exciting and people are so friendly on the trail. People are greeting each other and there's a sense of neighborhood that really the boundaries of the towns don't exist and you're just in this place together. That's right, there, so. is, a, there is a friendliness. Barrett also sits on the Recreation Commission and you can watch the entire Main Street interview where Barrett provides an update on the town's ongoing recreational efforts at westfordcat.org. Here's our favorite superintendent, Bill Olson, with news from the schools. Hi, this is Superintendent of Schools, Bill Olson, with the final school system update for the 2017-2018 school year. Uh, I want to take a minute to thank our staff, our students, and all of you for once again allowing us to have an excellent school year. Uh, our students have uh, performed at extraordinarily high levels uh, in academics, uh, in sports, in the fine and performing arts, and a multitude of other areas in our school system. It's a very special town, and it's a very special school system where all of us take our work very seriously, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. And I think that's a good lesson in life to follow, that uh, there's always someone who knows something more and can do something better than we can, and the trick is, remain humble and try to be that good and so I appreciate the approach that all of you have uh, have taken in terms of your volunteerism with us your support of us uh, with us on athletic fields in the performing arts centers uh, in the schools in general at town meeting uh, it has been extraordinarily appreciated and um, you'll never know how much you have contributed to the well-being of our students and our staff. So again, thank you. This is the time of year at the end of the year where we're ending up one school year and one fiscal year and beginning another. As of July 1st, we started the fiscal 2019. Uh, I get a lot of questions throughout the year saying, uh, do you work through the summer or do you have the summer off? Well, we work 12 months. Um, we do take a little bit of time off in the summer to uh, kind of renew ourselves, but not much. Um, and we enjoy what we do. Uh, other than that, we'll be planning for the next school year. We'll be, we'll be planning our professional development sessions with the uh, teachers, which is an important opportunity each time we have professional development for them to talk with their colleagues, to learn about particular uh, subject areas uh, that are up and coming and emerging in education, whether, whether it's pedagogical in nature, new materials, new supplies, new furnishings. Um, we want to take advantage of every opportunity to make an educational experience better for each child every year. I look forward to seeing you during the summer. When you come by the central office, please uh, stop in. My door is always open. I'd love to meet you and, and chat with you for a few minutes. Um, if you happen to see me in Market Basket or around town, please come over and say hi and uh, let's chat for a couple of minutes also. Always interested in what you have to say about the school system and ways to improve it. Look forward to seeing you next, uh, well, late summer in August and I've enjoyed being with you this year. So Bill Olson, I look forward to seeing you again.
Hashtag is a two-year-old black cat available now at the Lowell Humane Society. Here's Patty Stalker with more. Meet this two-year-old black beauty, Hashtag, available now for adoption at the Lowell Humane Society. Here's volunteer coordinator Marie Belargeron with more. This is Hashtag. Hashtag is around two years old and he originally came into the shelter because he had a large um, infected injury on his back. Uh, his previous owner just noticed that it seemed really tender and it was not looking too great so he brought him into us and when we had our vets take a look at him they actually found that there was a large laceration under his fur. We got that all taken care of. It took a long time, four months for him to fully complete healing and everything, get ready to come back to the shelter. But now he is here and waiting for his new home. Hashtag has come a long way from when he first got here. He was a very shy, nervous boy. Um, he's come a long way, he's a lot more confident now, but he also is going to need a very cat savvy home, a home who is pretty experienced with cats. He can be very shy when he first meets people. And he also has what we like to call catitude. Um, what we mean by catitude is when things aren't going his way, he'll sometimes give you a little bap to let you know that he's not okay with what's going on. Um, he definitely can get spooked by loud noises. Um, sudden movements are not his favorite either, although he's getting a lot better with that too. We don't know how Mr. Hashtag would do with other animals because the person who had him only had him a short time. They didn't have any other pets in the home. Um, there is potential that he could get along with maybe a cat savvy other animal, um, cat savvy cat or cat savvy dog, but we can't guarantee that. And a very slow patient introductory process will be important. As you can see, Hashtag and I are really good friends, but when I first started interacting with him, he was pretty spooked. Uh, it took lots of treats to win him over. If you'd like to learn more about Hashtag or any of the other pets looking for a new home at the Lowell Humane Society, or if you'd like to volunteer, donate, foster a pet, or fill their wish list, visit their website at lowellhumanesociety.org. They're located at 951 Broadway Street in Lowell. Call 978-452-7781. You can also find them on Facebook. For Westford Cat, I'm Patty Stalker. Our very own Rekha Sharma is here to tell you about the benefits of aloe vera. Hi everyone, I'm Rekha Sharma, your Ayurveda practitioner, back with a new health tip for Westfield Cat News. Today I'm going to talk about aloe vera. Aloe vera is rich in folic acid and packed with 22 amino acids. It is excellent for healing skin conditions like baldness, eczema, rashes, dermatitis, and mouth ulcers. Aloe vera based shampoos and creams are gentle, soothing and nourishing for the skin conditions. Aloe vera based juices helps to regulate blood sugar. It is also soothing for the gastric upsets and reduces constipation. It is a natural anti-inflammatory and reduces the inflammation of glands. It is also anti-cancerous. So prefer aloe vera based shampoos creams for applying, and drink aloe vera based juices to get the benefits. If you have any allergies, please contact your PCP before consuming or applying. I'll be back with a new health tip. Bye for now. This week brought us rain showers and sunshine. Everything a week in June can offer. Let's see what weather.com is predicting. Here's Westford Cat Marketing Outreach Director, Sarah Fletcher, 
with suggestions for things to do in the area. Thanks, Ira. More than 200 pieces of pre-owned framed art will be offered at a fundraising auction on Saturday, June 30th and Sunday, July 1st at the Parish Center for the Arts. The event opens at noon and runs to 4 p.m. on June 30th for a preview, a silent auction, and table sales. Admission is free. An evening live auction starts at 6 p.m. Admission is $10. Event concludes on July 1st from noon to 2. All proceeds will benefit Westford's Cameron Senior Center. For more information, call 978-692-5523. The Luna Theater is presenting Weirdo Wednesday on June 27th at 7.30 p.m. It's an evening of cult cinema presented by filmmaker Rob Fitz. The evening promises to show examples of horror, sci-fi, cult, and exploitation films from all eras. The show is free of charge. The Luna Theater is located in Mill No. 5 at 250 Jackson Street, Lowell. For more information, visit lunalowell.com or call 978-656-1828. The library kicks off its summer reading program with a performance by magician Mike Bentz on Wednesday, June 27th at 1 p.m. This book-themed show uses comedy, magic, games, music, sound effects, and storytelling to motivate kids to get reading. Tickets are $2 each for children and adults and are available by phone or in person. This program is for ages four and up. For more information, visit westfordlibrary.org or call 978-692-5555. We're gonna miss you, Ira. For one more time, back to you. That's it for now, Westford. We leave you with images from Westford Cat's annual meeting on June 20th. This is my last show for Westford Cat News. My family and I have moved out of state and I'm off to new adventures. Anchoring this show for the past few years has been an honor and a privilege, and I want to wish our viewers the very best life has to hold for all of you in Westford. Take care, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I want to take this opportunity to share with you why I'm volunteering tonight to take over the main leadership role in the organization. Welcome to the first edition of the I Like Ike Show. I'm your host, Ike Kelts. <laughs> That's the one. We'll be back right after this. Hi, welcome to Westford Cat Chat. I'm your host, Ira Kelts. Um, I'd like to introduce our studio manager, Lauren Horton, who's here with us today. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to Westford Art Party. I'm your host, Ike Kelts. Hi, I'm Ike Kelts, and we're here today at the grand opening of the Ronan McElligot uh, Memorial Playground. Oh, I'm so ready. Let's do this. Welcome. I'm Ira Kelts, and we're here live from the 2012 Westford Cat Live Halloween Show from the studio here. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, and welcome to Local Music Rocks. I'm your host, Ike Kelts. Hello, Westford. Welcome to the first weekly edition of Westford Cat News. And what a week it was. The news this week is all about the schools. I'm Ira Kelts, and it's time for Westford Cat News. And that's it for this week, Westford. We leave you with images at the MIT Wallace Observatory during the solar eclipse.
And that's a wrap, Westford. And that's all for this week. And that's a wrap for this week, Westford. To all who have contributed to our productions and news stories this year, thank you and happy holidays. <laughs> so on behalf of myself and Lauren Horton, thank you for watching Westford Cat Chat. I am fully committed to the long-term success of Westford Cat, and I hope that you will join me in this next chapter of the organization. Thank you. I'm Ira Kelts, and I approve this message.